And so we don't hire those people. So again, I look for integrity, for energy, and uh, for, uh, what does it say? Hello everyone, I'm Bartolo for Gallery Teachers, and we are producing a series of uh, videos about TEFL, that is teaching English as a foreign language. Today we are going to talk about job interviews from the perspective of a school owner. Our very special guest for today is Rita Inglesa, and uh, she might be familiar to the most of you because uh, she's a YouTube celebrity, and she's also the owner of a very successful school. In fact, if you search on Google, fantastic English, the first result is her school. She's a very nice person, very positive, very inspiring, but working with her is difficult. It's not impossible, but it's difficult. So let's have a look at the tips that she gave us and uh, the wisdom that she wanted to share with uh, our community. The people who are here, we have a strong company culture and you are right, I am the face of the company, but there's a reason I do this. I don't do that for feeding my ego or because I want to be everywhere and I don't want to let anyone else uh, be the face of the company. It's just that I know how marketing functions and it is impossible to associate Apple with 10 different uh, people you associated with Steve Jobs. Yeah. And knowing that, I implement that. People in my company love the fact that they are part of this team that is so popular online, that has such a founder because I inspire them. I don't take it as a, uh, you know, I'm your boss and you got to do what I tell you and this is the way it's going to work. We are not actually having this pyramid system that here's the boss, head teacher, and blah, blah, blah. It's very linear. It's very, um, I, when I talk about my, uh, the people on my team, I never say my employees. I hate that word. When I refer to them, I say my colleagues. Even when I talk to my uh, subscribers or followers, I tell them one of my colleagues is going to get in touch with you because I see them as colleagues. Talking about your team and your hiring process, I wanted to understand a bit more. So part of our audience are people who are studying to become a teacher, and then they have to find mm -hmm. their first job. You are the owner of a company. Can you tell us a bit about the mistakes you see in the CVs or the mistakes you see in the interviews and the good things that you are looking for? You are someone that hires people, not just somebody that works on hiring people for someone else. So please share your wisdom with us. It's really hard to, it's not that it's hard to get to work in fantastic English, but we are really, really, really careful and uh, like peculiar at uh, choosing the people who come work with us. And um, so we have a very good filter. Um, you asked about the CV, what we look at, and I'll uh, tell you a thing which a lot of people might not like, but I never read CVs. And uh, as a founder or as the head of the company, but there is the HR director who reads them, but only for looking uh, for important things like experience, age, for example. Yes, you cannot hire someone who is illegal to work as a teacher, for example, under 18 years old and stuff like that. And so they look at the CVs and then they make an appointment for the interview. The most important things for us in uh, people who join our company, be that a teacher or a sales manager, is the integrity, I'll tell you three things, integrity, level of energy, and passion for what they do. This is what we need. If the person has these things, if he's, he has integrity, and you can tell if that happens, especially I've been, I've, I've conducted hundreds of interviews, and so has my head teacher, the uh, HR director, and so we, we already have an eye for it. You can see these things in people, and you can see it when they're faking it. So we may end up hiring a teacher who has little experience, contrary to what we ask, but who has these three elements very well set in place. Because you can, all, I have this mantra, you can always help a person grow as a professional if he's already a good human being who's suitable for your company. But you can never ever make a good professional who's n who doesn't have these traits by default, you can never have him become a good suit for your company because, you know, uh, like it's a, uh, by default, he doesn't have the energy. It's him. And so when I see that, I accept this. I know that it's not that you're bad and I'm good. No, I'm not meaning, I'm not, I don't mean to say this. We are different. We're not gonna 
we're not going to speak the same language. And so it's not going to be a happy collaboration and we won't have it go to the right place. And so we don't hire those people. And so again, I look for integrity, for energy, and uh, for, uh, what does they, what did I say? Integrity, energy, and passion for doing these things. And then professionalism. First, we look at the level of English of the candidates, experience, have they worked with the teach, uh, adult, adults or not. Obviously, I'm not saying that I hire everyone who has energy. No, you got to be a teacher. You have to have the training. If you have CELTA or TEFL or TESOL or anything amazing, but I'm not going to hire a teacher who has the TEFL just because he has TEFL. I have to make sure he has integrity, energy, and passion. I have the same issues with uh, CVs. So a lot of people say, hire this person because uh, he studied in a good university. I think, no, maybe it's okay if he didn't study in the most amazing university, but just has a qualification. And it's fine if he has the right attitude. And uh, for example, I consider people that had experience as scouts, so chief scouts, because this means that they can manage people, that they are passionate. This shows that people like them, and it's very important to be likable as a teacher. Or, for example, musicians. So uh, that, that means that uh, they are creative people, they are passionate people, they have a completely different uh, skill set. Well, we have also interviews. I think I skipped that, but we meet them in person, uh, online, either in person, if they're local or online. We have an interview, and it's a 20, 30 minute interview where uh, you can get to know each other. It's not a real interview where we have, you have to qualify and tell us because the questions we ask will show your real traits. And um, there's a saying to say like something like this, a human being is never closer to perfection than when he is in an interview. You know, here are my strong thing. I'm very professional, I'm punctual. Who will ever say in an interview that they're not punctual and professional and passionate? It's one thing to say that about yourself, but another thing to demonstrate, to prove that, not only by words, but sh showing the way you are or asking, God, uh, answering other rather personal, not personal, but genital questions. Like, how would you deal with the student in this case? Or, I don't know, what got you into teaching? When I hear the answer, what got you into teaching? Or I have three questions, such as, uh, what makes you happiest in teaching? And... When people say things like, I love the results I get from them, I love the appreciation. When a person tells me, you know what, you're not going to like what I say, but I like it when they, at the end of the lesson, they come and they hug me and I feel fulfilled because I know I did something well and I do it for myself. I'm like, amazing, you're the right person. That means you're going to keep on doing that because you are dependent on the student's feedback and the result. And there's no way in the world that teacher will make a person feel bad or not learn English. And so there's a lot of peculiarities that you have to keep in mind and train your eye for. I wasn't good at this at the beginning. I had tens and hundreds of interviews that probably didn't go as well as they do now. In uh, many of the books I read about how to find a job and how to behave in interviews, they talk about NLP and they say something like, it's very important, never, ever, ever, ever cross your arms because this means that you are closed. I don't really think this is a thing. Has it happened to you that you didn't hire a person because they crossed their arms during the interview? Definitely not. But I can safely say that I haven't hired people who didn't smile at least once during the interview. And especially when I made like hints, you know, like I tell them about the company, like a sort of introduction and tell them who we are. And I tell like, we like energetic people. We like teachers who smile. And if the person still has a poker face, <laughs> then I, it's not that, again, not that the person's bad. I just know he's not a good fit for the company because here, everybody smiles. Look at me. That's how my team is. And I know that a student who comes to us and they have seen me before. And then when they are faced with a teacher who has a poker face, they will have this feeling of um, dissatisfaction that they cannot say because nothing actually is happening. How can you say, I don't like the teacher because she, they don't even know it, but they feel it. And so I look at these signs, as you say, the NLP. I read a lot of Tony Robbins, one of my favorite motivational speakers in the world. But uh, there's things that sometimes are true, sometimes are not. You know, if you keep your hands like that, just need, that might mean that you're comfortable. And if the rest of your facial expressions and what you say contradict this, this thing and doesn't show that you're closed, or somehow you don't want, you want to, you're hiding something, then it's fine. I'm guessing you as a 
As a person who chooses the people for a company, you have to be very good at scanning people. That's not something easy at all because you can still make mistakes. And I have made mistakes. I have fired people after a couple months, not in a way like, you know, what you're fired, but having the discussion and we both came to the conclusion that it's not working and I don't want to force you to do things that I need. At the same time, I see you unhappy, so we'll have to let you go. And the person agreed. It's not like a recipe for success all the time, but generally you have to read the body language because it's very important. Way more important than what the person is saying. Because if they say that, oh, I love children and they don't move and don't smile, like I love teaching and they say love teaching with a poker face, how I don't trust you. As a human being, I know that when I say that I love something, I show that in my eyes, in my face. So you have to to render that. And if you don't, probably you're different than me. Anyway, it's not going to work. Talking about your activities and how they changed, 2020 has been a year where everything changed completely. So before we were focusing on live classes and now we are online. How have your activities changed with the pandemic? We've always wanted to switch to teaching online as well as in class. And uh, I'll have to mention that by uh, March 2020, Fantastic English was a school, a local school uh, set in the capital of Moldova in Chisinau. And starting March, we became international by default because we switched to the online. At that moment, we had the same students who were living in Chisinau, but we moved to the online. But that gave us an opportunity to go and offer educational, like uh, English language courses, TOEFL, IELTS, Cambridge, English for kids, for teens different services of learning English for the people outside of Chisinau. And I mean to say Moldovans who live, for example, up north or in the south of Moldova, who always wanted to have that alternative. They would text me like, Rita, when are you going to open a school here in Edinets or Britain, which is uh, in the uh, extreme north of the country, furthest uh, city from Chisinau. And so I was very happy that yeah, it's hard, you know, it's a pandemic, You're, you, you have no idea how long it's going to last, it's a lot of uncertainty, but I looked at the positive thing, and the positive thing is that we started being able to offer that for other people, and then Romania, even if we were to be able to open a school in, uh, for example, Bucharest, or Brasov, or Cluj, that's still only for Bucharest, Brasov, and Cluj. What about a person who's from Timisoara or a person who's from Hush, any city? They are far away. And so we thought about this. And I was aware of the fact that we are moving towards the online faster and faster. But the pandemic simply forced us with the reality. And that's the reason we were partly stressed by what was happening in March and partly happy. Because back in the days, we would have to course on our team, they were just happening by default. And it wasn't like we made them go in the online, it was the coronavirus. And uh, this is better because when I tell the people, you know what, we're going to start teaching online, they take it as my decision. When it's an, a worldwide situation, they understand that that's the reality. And it helped us, helped not us, but helped the team accommodate. And I'm very happy because I'd say 50% or even more percent of the success depend on the team happiness and satisfaction with what they're doing. And, uh, and so I needed to make sure that they would have that. And then initially, we're very skeptical to be here because for one, by that moment, it was only me who was teaching online, uh, having courses with uh, tens of people, hundreds of people. They were in a different format. You are probably much more familiar with, with this format when you go in an online uh, learning management system. You have the video, the homeworks. It's more flexible for the student, but at the same time, you don't have this real face-to-face communication as they had in class. But I was testing that to see how, if it works. So by the time the pandemic started, we had only had the uh, experience of uh, me working online. And so everything that they got to hear was my encouragement. Like, it's going to work, guys. It's still fine. It's not exactly like in class. I'm not going to lie. It is not. You don't get a hug. You don't get a student bringing you a surprise coffee because it happens. And all these small things, they sometimes make us happier. So you don't get that. But the people from Moldova who have been living in California, in Chicago, who get online and Zoom with you and they're like, oh, I miss Moldovan people. I'm so happy to see you. This is also very important. Yes, they study English and they speak English. But the feeling of connection is super important. And people started feeling that because... 
probably not many people who watch this will know, but both Moldova and Romania have huge number of uh, immigrants who left the country and who have been living in UK, Ireland, Italy, France, all over the world for many years. And the truth is those people miss their country. You know, they miss the food, they miss the, the peculiarities that, and we all have them. And so it was a way to get back at us. And of course, the affordability. Our courses, compared to what is being offered on the uh, UK market, for example, are much more affordable for them. And so obviously they connected to us. The team, that eventually the team got used to this and it went very well. Um, I am more than happy because uh, once we got back on track in April, March, May, yeah, by the end of spring, we started hiring teachers for working online because in March we had the teachers who were working in class, we just moved to the online. But starting April, we were like recruiting new people to work online on Zoom. And now we have teachers who are, their nationality is Moldovan Romanian, but are currently living in Portugal, Germany, Romania. And I think we have one from Serbia or Croatia, I'm not sure. All of them are Moldovan as far as I, maybe, no, probably Romanian as well. It's the same thing as I say. So they uh, work with us online and we never met in face, face to face, which is yeah. amazing. I think it's, uh, yeah, the pandemic sucks. I agree. It, it sucks bad, but the, there is uh, the other side of the coin, which is positive. So why not see that? Every time you speak, I say, yes, you're right. <laughs> I agree with you completely. I just wrote an article about the future of TEFL, and this is exactly what I'm saying. So the coronavirus didn't invent online teaching. It's just that it pushed it. This is something that would have happened in five years or maybe 10 years. It's just that now we had a deadline and we had to face it. I can see also a lot of opportunities and opportunities to grow. And we have been in a crisis before. So the, the difference between uh, other crises is just that now we can act. It goes through cycles and it's normal to have them. And uh, I think that everyone will agree with what I say now is that 2020 gave us a big, a very good lesson. You have to be flexible and adaptable to survive. If you're not, you'll disappear. And uh, if we talk about teachers and teaching English as a foreign language, as a second language, if the teacher refuses to teach on Zoom or refuses to learn to use the whiteboard or interactive activities and refuses to accept that it's not a real life interaction, but you see them on the computer and they don't turn on their cameras because damn it, why don't they do that? If the teacher refuses to adapt to that, she's gonna get much unhappier than she was and probably uh, to switch to a different job would not be a solution. But anyway, it's not gonna bring anything good to her life. So you have to be adaptable. If you're not, it's like only the strongest survive. And 2020 showed us that it's not about the most talented or the most, uh, I don't know, the most professional teachers, because this is also important, but it's not about them. It's about the most adaptable teachers. And I would like to add, uh, if you are teaching online, don't stay on your pajamas. That's a part of our check checklist for the lesson, by the way, which is what I was talking er earlier about, about the standards, about the procedures in a company. You cannot come at a lesson in a hoodie. I love hoodies. I'm wearing hoodies all the time. Uh, especially on my YouTube, because I create this sense of being uh, um, being a uh, like closer to to the teenagers, and I love Billie Eilish and stuff. But when you have a class of ten students and you came in, like you're not wearing just a hoodie, Bartolo. You're wearing a t-shirt underneath, a polo t-shirt. Yeah. That's casual, business casual. It's it's okay. But if you come in a hoodie and your face looks like you just woke up, you yeah. don't give the right message, even if that's you. And so if you the way you look in class would be needed to be similar online. You have to have the same. I mean, I couldn't come in this live lesson, even if I looked not like this up until now. I had to put up a little bit of makeup and a little bit of stick, lipstick, even if I'm a person who, I mean, if you see me in real life, I'm wearing some sort of pajamas and my hair is all messed up. And I'm more of an um, influenced by the Western culture to say so. I don't care that much about the looks. But at the same time, I realized that it's not about the looks, it's about the mood you set out. And people like beauty, and so why not give them that? Thank you, Rita. It's been really nice to have you again on uh, this channel. If you want to work with uh, Rita Inglesa, just Google Rita Inglesa or Fantastic English and you will find her.
If you think you have something important to tell to the TEFL community, you want to write an article for our blog or you want to get interviewed on this channel, please write at editorial at galleryteachers.com. Also, if you want to become a pro member, I will leave a link in the description. We produce a lot of content. We have job opportunities available for our members and we also produce workshops delivered by top trainers in the TEFL industry. And that's all for today. I am Bartolo for Gallery Teachers. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up up, subscribe to our channel, help us grow as a community. Thank you for being with us and uh, until next time, happy teaching and happy learning.